Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. This week I'm in another different location. I'm just like hopping around people's houses. Not really. This is my dad's house um, and I've moved out of my flat in London and I do not yet have a place to move into in Bristol. So welcome to my new temporary abode. I think it's looking pretty nice at the moment and I've got all my stuff from my previous room so it's already feeling very homely which is lovely. On that note I apologise if there are lots of building noises. It's because there's lots of building going on <laughs> um, just across the road so if you can hear drilling or whatever they do in building. I can't really help that, I'm afraid, but hopefully you can still hear me okay and that it's not too distracting. At least I don't have fear in like typing in the background like I did in Dorset, so <laughs> it was his room so I couldn't exactly kick him out. This week I got a couple of requests of people asking if I could do a vlog on how to get off a fitness plateau. So I guess with so many people having started running at the beginning of lockdown um, or thereabouts, they will have seen improvements really quickly as anyone does with a new routine in fitness or with a lot of things, you improve very, very quickly, steep learning curve, and then you start to plateau off. And that's basically as your body starts to adapt to the training that you're giving it. So you're giving it progressive overload and it's getting more and more, more intense and your body adapts to that and eventually you plateau off because the gains that you can make become smaller and smaller. And in a way, that's a good thing because it means that your body has adapted to the training that you're giving it and that shows that you are able to improve and improve, but it's also an annoying thing because it means that it's less rewarding each time you go for a run or go to the gym you're not improving in the way that you were at the beginning and that can be kind of harmful for motivation especially if you're sort of relying on seeing improvements for your motivation so first thing I wanted to mention on it is that plateaus are not necessarily a bad thing sometimes it can be good to improve have progressive overload and then plateau and maintain yourself at that point if you can for a bit before going up again because our bodies are not made to improve all the time and actually I did a post on this the other day on my Instagram it is impossible to continuously get better there comes a point for some people it's the Olympics level for most of us it's sort of somewhere as an amateur runner or you know person who goes to the gym where you can't continue improving anymore without changing up a lot of different things and for most people that sort of thing is not very sustainable which is why it's good to save for times when you actually need it for example if you're training for a race or for a competition and you need to have some relatively short-term improvements in your pace or your ability to run long distance or your you know the amount that you can lift or whatever it is don't feel disheartened if you are plateauing in terms of your fitness I can say with full disclosure that I have basically plateaued every year I think my fitness goes up and up and up and then it goes down a little bit but then from that point after it's gone down it goes up and up and up next time I have to train for a race so even if you feel like you're losing fitness you're already you're still at a higher baseline than you were obviously when you started training so don't worry about it too much be kind to your body it is doing the best that it can but with that said I'm going to give a couple of tips of how to get off a plateau if that is what you want the first tip is gonna sound a bit strange, but it is make sure your recovery is on point. So a lot of fitness benefits are made in the time between the points that you're actually doing your running or going to the gym. It is not the case that more is always better. And I think obviously if you are gonna be running more and more and more, you may see improvements, but you may also injure yourself and you may actually lose your interest for running. Maybe you're not gonna enjoy it anymore. Recovery is one thing that we can all control that actually has a massive benefit when it comes to actually the progress that we can see. So for example, the micro tears that you make during exercise are fixed in over your over the time that you're sleeping and also um, fixed by with help from uh, protein in the food that you are eating so if you're not eating enough protein if you're not having enough food in general and that's a really important point you've got to have enough calories and if you're not getting your eight hours a night or as close to it as you possibly can you're not going to be seeing the fitness benefits that you could be and same goes for things like stretching um, and for warming up as well those things are very important 
important for some people, less important for others, but if you're not doing everything you can to aid recovery, then you're not going to be seeing the fitness benefits that you possibly could. So take a look at your routine, take a look at the last week, and if you actually were running every single day, or you were trying to do a lot of different stuff, then that might be hindering the amount that you can actually train, and then if you can't train at the intensity that you would like to train, you're not going to see the benefits that you would like to see. So yeah, rest is really, really important. The next point, and probably the most important other than rest when it comes to improvements is make sure you have variety and I think it can get really easy to get a bit complacent and start to go out for things go out for runs that you feel comfortable with and that's understandable you know you want to enjoy your runs you want to be having fun but you can't always do the same distance or the same speed because if you do that you're going to get very used to that distance or speed and struggle to push it out of that comfort zone. So most runners, most very good athletes have a sort of 80-20 rule where 80% of their miles are fairly easy, um, low intensity, they're very slow and that's just to get miles in the legs and then 20% are very high intensity training sessions and most of us amateur runners actually spend most of our time in the sort of somewhere in between the two and then actually find it quite hard to push on when we want to and then we don't want to go slowly because we want to be going as fast as we can all the time and I have definitely fallen into this trap myself I really enjoy running fast so it's nice when you can but actually it's really hard to maintain that intensity especially if all of your runs are sort of a seven or an eight out of ten in terms of effort put in it's really hard to maintain that intensity throughout the week and chances are you won't be able to manage the very high intensity runs because you're not doing the very low intensity runs and same goes for training in the gym as well you need easy days as well as um, heavy days so make sure that your runs are not the same and in terms of running I would really recommend trying interval training this is one of the best ways to inject some speed into your running I spoke about this with my coach and this is something that we have been doing over the last year or two I love intervals because like I say I like running fast and also it's nice to be able to go a little bit faster you feel comfortable with and see the improvements and the improvements are so palpable if you're used to running say you, most of your runs at sort of five minutes per kilometre pace and then you're doing your intervals at 4.30, 4.20, 4.15 minutes per kilometre pace then suddenly that five minutes per kilometre is going to feel very slow it's going to feel like quite easy for you and that's really great because that means that when you want to push the pace you are used to doing so much faster than that and your legs are kind of used to it they have the muscles they have the strength you can inject that little bit of speed and there are so many different types of intervals that you can do um, I'm not going to go through them here but I have done a blog post on interval training that also has some resources in it as well that links to some other places where you can have a look at the sort of interval sessions that people do and that people can recommend. There are loads of different ones that I do but I tend to do sort of one kilometer fast pace, one kilometer slow pace and then alternate those for as long as I like or five or six minutes on and then stop and rest and breathe through the nose until my heart rate's gone back to 130 or below and then do the next one and do that five times or something, four or five times. You will be amazed at the benefits that uh, interval training has. It has been shown to have the same benefits as longer runs but in a much shorter space of time and that is also really good if you are lacking in time um, for your exercise. The next uh, point is cross training and this is something that I mention on a lot of my vlogs. Cross training, strength and conditioning, work basically again it's a form of variety in your training it's so 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 important a lot of people who like running just like running and don't necessarily enjoy um, lifting weights or doing physiotherapy sessions or strength and conditioning anything with resistance maybe they're not going to enjoy so much likewise with anyone who goes to the gym maybe they are avoiding cardio like the plague having this sort of cross training it may feel counterproductive initially because maybe you can't fit in the same mileage as you're doing because you are doing different stuff as well but when it comes to becoming a stronger runner and being able to put your body through increased amount of stress and by stress i mean mileage cross training is absolutely vital and it it might feel like taking a step back initially, but it's a step back to pin yourself forwards. I absolutely love cross training, um, and actually I kind of almost prefer cross training to the running itself, but recently I've been enjoying the running so much that 
naturally my cross training has taken a hit and I've not been seeing the improvements that I need to see. So I am gonna pick up the amount of physiotherapy sessions that I'm doing. It's physiotherapy for me, but it's it's sort of essentially what it is, is body weight resistance training. And hopefully that means that when I'm next training for a race, I will have the strength in my muscles and my ligaments and um, my body in general to be able to have a higher intensity of training. And it's kind of a springboard into your next training regime. And the last one, the last point that I'm going to make, and it kind of encompasses the other ones as well. Don't try too many different things at once and remember the 10% rule. So the 10% rule, for those of you who don't know, is basically the general rule that you shouldn't increase your mileage every week by more than 10%. Usually during a training plan, you, for example, if you're training for a marathon or a half marathon, you will increase the distance that you're doing per week by up to 10%. Any more than 10% and you are actually at an increased risk of injury and you might have to take a couple of steps back before being able to go ahead again. The body can only handle so much. The 10% rule is kind of frustrating in a way that it feels like it might limit the amount that you can do, especially if you're feeling good, if you're feeling fresh, you might want to be able out there doing more, but it's there basically to protect you and to make sure that the adaptive changes that you're making are adaptive and not harmful. And I think that's a trap that a lot of people fall into when they get quite excited about their running or, their start, or they start to feel very fit and strong and capable. That's great, but just take it easy. Progress made slowly tends to be more sustainable than progress made very quickly whereby you might get injured or lose interest in whatever you are doing. And the point on don't try too many things at once is really important. I know I've mentioned lots of different things that you could be doing to get off a plateau, but other than the taking more rest, which definitely should be done for everyone and can be done with these other things, don't try to increase your distance, your intensity, intervals training, sprints, uh, doing resistance training. Don't try all of that at the same time. Chances are your body will be get, become a little bit overloaded and panic, freak out a little bit, and you might be exhausted or you might injure yourself. Don't try loads of things at once, maybe one week do a longer run, another week try interval training and then start to incorporate some easy interval training into your routine and then start to do resistance training. Don't try and maintain the intensity of running that you're doing whilst also doing the resistance training because that is a different form of exercising and it is exercising all the same. So it, it can be quite stressful for your body. So just be sensible and don't do everything all at once. Okay, so that is it for this week's vlog. Nice and short, I hope it was helpful for you guys. Remember, it is impossible to be improving all the time. It can be really frustrating to not be seeing the benefits that you were initially seeing when you started a training regime. We've all been there and especially as a relatively new runner, um, my Myself. you know I'm used to seeing improvements week on week and also I feel like every run should be kind of as fast as I can make it or as good as I can make it. I feel like every run should be the perfect run and that's just not possible and obviously for runners who have been out there doing it for a long period of time that all seems so obvious like not every run is going to be great and not every run should be fast. That seems really obvious to people who have been doing running for a long time but for any newbies, anyone who is kind of competitive with themselves that can be quite difficult to grasp in your head so just be kind to your body and remember that we are only human and we can only do what we can do and the body takes time to adapt so give it some time. I hope you get off your fitness plateaus, I hope you enjoyed this video as well, if you did enjoy it please do give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Come and find me over on Instagram um, and share this vlog if you think anyone else will find it useful. Thanks so much for watching, bye!